What's up, guys? You see, uh, happy Wednesday, everybody. I hope all of you guys had a un, uh, a great Fourth uh, of July. I hope you guys didn't drink a lot and you're hungover today. I don't drink. I only drink uh, Humix. Look, guava. <sighs> so it's a great day in the neighborhood. Uh, what's up, Stephanie? Are you back from Tahoe? You're still up in Tahoe? If you're back, uh, welcome back. Uh, no, still there. Wow, you took the whole week. <laughs> Well, hurry back. We want to see you uh, in Sacramento. What's up, guys? <laughs> uh, coming back today? Awesome. Awesome. Someone, Denise Reese, is going to help me make shirts that will say what's up guys yeah see <laughs> you read my mind you read my mind we need that shirt what's up guys my fourth of july was great i spent it here with my kids uh, we watched the uh, fireworks here from our house uh, hello. Hey, Marco. What's up, Bianca? What's up, guys? Are, are you, uh, are you at your house? Are you home or? Yes, yes, I'm, I am. Awesome. Well, you know, I wanted to do a live because I saw you this morning and I said, wow, I need, you're my hero. I need to learn how to go up there on the microphone and tell because you know, I really like that you you just got there and you took care of business. I mean, you you were not complaining. You were just there for what you were for, you know. I tried my best, Marco. I mean, you know, it's now or never, you know. Um, and uh, this this opposition, you know, the left had been going to city council already. Uh, they held their own conf news conferences, and um, you know they were just asking that the that the uh, city of Pasadena join in this lawsuit. And I said, you know, now they're in my backyard, and no one from our side was saying anything. And I said, you know, we can't do this anymore. We have to, um, you know, show up, and we have to be a voice. And so that's what I did. I mean, that's what I try to do. So. The beautiful thing about today, Marco, it was the beautiful thing is I was able to pull together diversity, diversity and unity. So we had MLK Association, Martin Luther King Association. We had our Asian community, someone representing the Asian community. We had Latinos for Trump. And then, of course, me on behalf of the you know Republican Party of Texas. And so we had diverse group there. We had uh, one of our individuals, Victor Miguel, Victor Miguel, who just became a U.S. citizen about a year ago. He's another, you know, it's like Maria, Maria, who just became a U.S. citizen and truly understands that, you know, our national sovereignty. And he really is adamant about people being here legally, just like him, you know. And so it was very, very important for us to go and speak uh, and talk about we don't want our money being spent on so lawsuits. Like, move on. <laughs> like, move on. This is, you know, we want our money, our tax.
see libraries putting in more money into education, um, doing things that for the community, you know, improving our, uh, our social service. I mean, you know, like the fire department, police department, improving those, those service agencies that haven't really had a lot of money, maybe putting more money into our historic district. We have a historic district that really needs to be revitalized. There's a lot of things that we need to be spending our money on here in our city than to be joining lawsuits just because you don't like that something, you know, they're telling you to be legal and you don't want to, you don't want to abide by the rules. What is the lawsuit about? So the lawsuit is they're trying to say that SB4, in which just reinforces federal law, it tells people that are in office, such as sheriff's department, chief of police, uh, it is um, uh, just elected officials. It's basically... Uh, the governor signed into office. We are not going to be doing any more sanctuary cities. There's no more sanctuary cities in the state of Texas. And if you don't abide by the law, it's going to hold those elected officials accountable. They can actually be fined now and even go to go to jail for not complying with the law. So it just reinforces that we don't get to choose, pick and choose as elected officials, which laws we want to do and which ones we don't. So it's it's about following the law. And so SB4, they want to they want to sue the governor in the state of Texas and SB4 because they want to say that it's unconstitutional. There's a division between church and state. Well, the last time I checked, I live in a city, not in a church. I am the church, but I don't live in a church. So, um, you know, they're trying to use it's what the left does. They 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 use they get rhetoric and they go that rhetoric they want to go and instill more fear fear into our communities you know they want to tell them all these things and lies you know marco no one had come in to speak on behalf of our government on behalf of our president or governor or as before um no one had done that they they've been going up to city council they've been running the rhetoric they've been running their own little thing well, today they had a rude awakening when I showed up. Oh, they were pissed. They were so pissed. If you go on, on my live videos, I went and I was like, oh, the opposition is here. They were so mad, Marco. They came after me. They were so mad. And here was the thing. They wanted to say that, you know, oh, yeah, it's this, this law is unconstitutional and you need to do your research. Well, I have done my research. <laughs> I have done my research. You know what, if, you know, I don't want my money being spent, my tax dollars being spent on having to take this all the way to the Supreme Court. Because our Supreme Court's going to kick it back. We as a state of Texas, we have the right to put those laws into place. They're not unconstitutional. I'm sorry. You know, well, you've got to follow the law or you don't. I've been listening to the, uh, to the other side and uh, all the kids that are mad and they're saying it's racist. And I keep saying, why is it racist? <laughs> I mean, it might be unfair yeah. for the community that you'd, uh, you're trying to defend, but it's, it's yeah. not racist, you know? Uh, and, and the thing, also, I saw, I don't know, maybe it's the, the guy you're talking about, this kid that was talking on your live feed, and he was telling Telemundo and Univision, look, what we're doing is good, even for the undocumented community, because it's putting pressure to, to get something done to get out of the status quo, you know? So what do you think about that? I think that the left is just so out of control that they're willing to use anything and everything that they can to obviously push their own agenda. And they're going to continue to do that. The other thing is that they can't say that it's racist. I came in there with MLK for crying out loud. That's Martin Luther King Association. I came in there with an Asian and we were all Hispanics. We had not one white person speak on behalf of the Republican Party or any of our conservative issues. We had okay. no one, no one speaking on behalf. So for that, you know, that's the thing. We didn't, that's, that's what's crazy about it is that, that they were so mad that someone showed up to oppose them so you know it was crazy but 
they, they, they can't they can't win on this is a racist issue it's not i came in there with a diverse group of people that are for as before we want our law enforcement to follow the law period that's what we want we want that to happen so so anyhow um we we made a statement today marco and so far we'll see what what happens you know we had univision we had telemundo i, I called the press conference and we had Telemundo, we had Univision, we had our KPRC, which is, you know, Channel 2, NBC, NBC and Fox. We had, we had them out there as well as the paper, as well as the, um, the, the, the local paper here. And, um, yeah, they, they were really mad, Marco. But if you see the footage of the people that spoke on behalf. I mean, I put this together yesterday. I put this together on 4th of July and sent out a press release and said, hey, you know what? We're ready to speak and we're ready to say something. And I'm not going to stand for this rhetoric of you coming and marching into my city and telling my city and my council members and my mayor that we need to join in a lawsuit that you're never going to win. More wasted money on behalf of our city. So I'm not standing for that. And, uh, so anyway, that is, you know, I think it was a bold move. I had not called a press conference since I've been the state director, you know, for the Republican Party. I mean, I've, I've spoken a lot, but I've never done, you know, I hadn't done that. And I said, you know, it's now or never, people. We're either going to stand up for what we believe in or we're just going to stay quiet, you know, out there in the little corner and just let, you know, these people run their rhetoric and try to tell us how to run our city. So I think today set a very good example for we showed unity and diversity in saying that we stood with our president for the laws that were coming out. We stood for SB4 and we stood for, um, you know, for our governor. And to, you know what? In, in honesty, shame on the Democrats, right? Because what they did is they didn't want to follow the rules. They didn't want to follow the laws that were already in place for decades here in the state of Texas. They wanted to pick and choose what laws they wanted to follow and not follow. So you know what? You put our governor into a corner because we're not willing to lose federal funding just because you want to keep these sanctuary cities and keep these illegals, you know, and criminals. We're worried about the criminals. Keep them, you know, in a safe haven. Set up these safe havens for them. We're not going to do that anymore. So you pushed our governor into action and this is what you get so democrats you made this worse it wasn't us we're just saying obey the laws that are already in the books but you made this worse for the people but marco these people literally came up there and i don't know if you heard them but this girl was in there going off on oh these poor children they're gonna get them out of the school and they're gonna be asking them for their birth certificate and their social security that's not what this is about that's them, rhetor their rhetoric about, hey, you know, um, that's what the fear that they want to instill into the community. No police officer is going to go to the school to go ask you if you're illegal or not. Now, if you're breaking the law, if you're robbing a house, if you're selling drugs, if you're driving without, you know, taillights, if you're, if you're breaking laws, you're going to get stopped. You're putting yourself in danger of getting stopped because, again, you're not following and complying with laws. And so when you do that, no, it's way in it, when I'm doing that, you sit there and you open yourself up to, to all of that. You open yourself up to being pulled over. You open yourself up to being, you know, again, questioned by the police officers. So I've said this time and time again, but of course they'll never, they'll never give me that. But I used to work in the jails. I worked in the jails and I used to recommend uh, bail or detention on people. And back in the nineties, when I worked in the jail, they used to have a tag and it said INS hold. That meant I couldn't, I couldn't interview that person until INS came in there and, and interviewed them. If INS didn't, want them or didn't have a problem with it or didn't need them, right? There, were, there weren't somebody that were looking for. They let the hold off and then we can come in there. We could interview them, determine whether there were a flight risk or whether there were a danger to community. Those are the two things we looked at. 
Then what we did is business along, right? And the ones that the, the uh, that the INS that they knew there were criminals or there were people they were looking for or somebody who was a danger to the community, they would put them on a transfer to federal detention, and then they'd get a hearing in federal court and then face deportation at that time. The president of the United States at that time was Bill Clinton. How come nobody was making a big deal about it? How come nobody was saying anything when the Democrat that was in office, which was our president Clinton, he was doing it. This was going on. INS could go in there and question people and talk to people and just make sure that they were not a danger to the community. They come in there and do that. So why is it so different now? Why is it that all of a sudden, you know, the conservatives have, are in power now or the majority, and they're just in an uproar saying everything that we do is racist. Well, that card is getting old. It's not racist. It's you know, following the law. I was it's vetting about- people. Yeah, it's vetting people and finding out whether they're here to cause, you know, that they're here good and they don't, you know, somebody got arrested for whatever it was, right? I mean, little misdemeanor things. The INS didn't want anything with those people. They'd release them back and they say, ah, they've been living here already for 20 years, whatever, you know, and they let them go. They knew that they weren't that grave danger to the community. But there was people that were. And this is all through the people who are good or not good. The people who are here, you know, that are illegally, that are criminals, hardcore criminals. And so, anyway, that is something I keep saying over and over. And I'm like, why is it all of a sudden that it's wrong to follow the law? This law was has been in place for decades. And all of a sudden, in the past, since Obama took over, all of a sudden, everything was okay. Illegals could run around and do whatever they wanted, take our free services, come and go as they please, commit murder, leave the country, come back into the country, catch and release. It's an ongoing cycle. I'm like, enough is enough. You've taken advantage of the United States. You've taken advantage of our good citizens. You've taken advantage of our system. Enough is enough. And now they're in uproar. And I'm like, to go and sit there and tell these kids, listen, and that's the other thing. They're telling little kids, oh, they're, the immigration's going to come and ask you for papers. They don't give a rat's butt if you have papers or not. They're not going to ask you if you're a citizen. They're not going to ask you for birth certificates. What they're going to do now, if you're a little kid and you're breaking the law and you're selling drugs or you're doing something, robbing, whatever you're doing, if you're a little kid, well, you better believe you're probably going to get questioned. Don't break the law. You don't get questioned. No one's going to mess with you if you're not breaking the law. But if you're breaking the law, guess what, buddy? The law, it'll finally catch up to you. People who break the law never get away with it for the rest of their life. You break the law, you either end up dead or you end up in prison eventually. Period. It's just the way it is. So to tell these little kids and put fear in them, that's not what this is about. This is for their own personal safety. This is not about us just going, we're going to go trying to get little kids out of the school. I mean, who says that? The Democrats. The Democrats are very good at instilling fear and continuing to keep the communities enabled. Well, the Republican Party is not about enabling people. We're about empowering people. Empowering people to be better, to be productive citizens, to be here legally. We are here for great, equal opportunity. We are here for that American dream. Everybody wants the American dream. We're capitalists. We're entrepreneurs. That's what the Republican Party stands for. And the first and foremost thing is we are a party who, obviously, we honor God. We honor God. And I Renette, read today. Uh, uh, this morning. Yes. This morning, uh, there is a note that seven, seven out of ten uh, legal residents are applying for citizenship. So this is actually helping a lot of people make a decision and yes. get a commitment. Yes. To be an American. Yes. Because it's really. Oh my commitment. God, that's awesome. But yes. But you know what? There is, a, there is another note, too. Seven out of ten that are legally resident are applying for citizenship. Uh, only four out of ten that are Mexican descendant are applying to be uh, a U.S. citizen. So I am, I am a, a Mexican, so we are more hard-headed when it comes to becoming a U.S. citizen, and I don't know why. Maybe uh, yeah. uh, 
because our community, uh, we're more territorial. I don't know. I, I think it's, I think Marco, and I think you've said this before in one of your interviews. I think that the, the thing is that you feel that once you apply to be a citizen, that you're all of a sudden, you know, you're not, um, you're letting your old, you know, your, your, who you, who you are, where you came from, that you're giving that up. And that's not what it's about. It's about, it's, it's, you're not, you're not betraying your country because you're going to become legally here or because you're going to become a citizen here. You're not betraying anybody. That just means to me, you know, I think it's, it's a, it's a fear. Los Mexicanos, the, the, you know, the, the, I think the Mexican, like, like you said, you know, y'all are, it's, it's a stigma. Y'all, you, you don't want to take that first step, but see, that's what this SB4 is doing. Listen, all these laws that Trump is doing, that's, those are great statistics, because that's making people who have been sitting, you know, just the, the Democrats have done that. See, they've kept them, you know, nah, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to, you know, just live in the sanctuary cities. You don't have to do anything. But now you're being held accountable. So now you have to make a choice. Do I want to be a citizen? Do I not want to be a citizen? Do I want to be here legally? Not illegal. These people are now coming out, as you see, according to those statistics, and they're now going to jump off the fence and say, you know what, I'm going to pledge loyalty to this country because of what it has afforded me to do. I've, if you've lived here for 15, 20 years, why would you not? Why would you not want to take that step? If you really love our country, take the step to become the citizen. The laws are there. See, that's the thing. That's what I'm saying. The Democrats are really good about pushing that agenda and the narrative to scare people. But we already have laws in place that you have the right to become a citizen or you can't be here legally. There's already laws in place. You just have to follow the laws, period. You know, we're not going to create these little safe haven, uh, uh, you know, sanctuary cities anymore so that you can just continue to live like, you know, no big deal. I'm going to, I'm here illegally. And that's still breaking the law being here illegally. That means you crossed, you had no permission to come here. So you're still illegal. So that's still breaking the law. And look at look at the word sanctuary cities. I, I wonder who came up with that word. Why would it be sanctuary cities? When Obama was there, he was deporting all these people. I know people that were deported when Obama was in place. Why did they not uh, allocate funds for for the sanctuary cities? If this is all about this is a lot uh, about money. Actually, there's a city uh, next to me. It's Pittsburgh, California. They revoked the sanctuary city status. And I'm very, very happy about that because the money that, that they're allocating for, I think LA allocated $12 million. And San Francisco wow. is working on, on like maybe like $11 million. So it, it seems that it's more of a, a fundraiser, uh, scare tactics than, than really who, yeah. helping those kids that you're talking about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And instead of instead of wanting to to waste money on joining lawsuits, you should take that money and put it into the community and start English classes for people. I mean, you got to learn English. You're here in, in America. You got to learn English. That's our that's our first language. We're not saying you don't ever have to speak Spanish again, but you should learn the the language of the country. So we should be taking those resources and helping people. Instead of joining lawsuits that you're never going to win. Also, and it's a waste of something. money. Bianca, you know how they say that water runs downhill, right? Well, yeah. if, you are, if you are a legal resident and I want to apply for my, to sponsor my brother or, or my dad or somebody, it's going to take 20 years or 15 years for them to be called. Now, if I am a citizen and I apply to sponsor uh, a family member, it's only three to five years. So if they know that becoming a citizen, not only they have uh, better um, opportunities to be here in the country, but they can also sponsor somebody that really deserves to be here. Yes. But you know why they don't go and take the citizen, uh, the, the citizen test? Because of the language. They, they're afraid to go and learn a couple questions in English. And, and I think that's very... Uh, that, what is the commitment? Uh, you know, if they if they go to work at McDonald's because they want to yeah. earn money, they'll learn the whole freaking menu. Welcome to McDonald's. How can I help you? Would you like to <laughs> with that? You know, 
I know a guy that, that didn't speak English, but he knew how to, he knew the whole menu of McDonald's. And You're I, absolutely like, right. You tell me, you know, the whole menu of McDonald's and you're afraid to go and answer a couple of freaking questions in English to become a citizen. I mean, come on. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Come on. Right. I mean, where are the priorities? That's the thing is that, you know, you want to reap the benefits of the country, but you want to only do it on certain terms. And you can't do that anymore. You're going to reap the benefits of the country. You got to abide by our laws. You know, you got to have some respect. That, that's what this is to me about. Respecting the country that, that has offered you opportunity, that has offered you the ability to be here to live a better life, to, for, you know, to get a better job, a better education. Show some respect to the country you know, that you are, that you are in that has afforded you those opportunities. That's what it has to do with is that we've lost some kind of respect, you know, and that is, I think we need to learn, uh, we need to teach that a little bit more. It's just respect. We're not asking you to give up, you know, d d disclaiming that you, uh, you know, being proud of being a Mexican, Venezuelan, Colombiano. We don't, we don't, you know, we're not asking you to give up all those things, but we're asking that if you really want to live here, be proud of living here and invest in it. You know, it's like we say, Hispanics, our communities, we need to be, we're an investment. We're just as much an investment for the United States. So we need to also duly, it's our duly responsibility to also be accountable and show some respect to the country that affords us these opportunities. That is what it has to do with. And to me, I think that today, you know, obviously where I live, a sleeping giant was awoken. I mean, they really didn't see me coming. And they didn't see anybody else coming. And they didn't like it. Because all of a sudden, they had opposition. And our opposition was strong. And we were diverse. And we were united. And... We didn't fit in their little rhetoric. So they tried to use that we were racist, but you can't use that anymore. You had minorities speaking out. You couldn't use that we're racist anymore. First, you used to use that we were racist because there was a bunch of white people speaking. Now you have minorities speaking, and they still want to call you a racist. So I'm like, really? So I'm a racist because I want people to follow the law. You know, and there was this one girl, Marco, she went in there and she was so mad. And she was like, I'm broad, brown and proud and loud. And the audience was like, I can't believe she just said that. I'm like, this hasn't, this has nothing to do with being brown. I'm brown. But I'm not going to go and tell people I'm brown and loud and, you know, I'm proud and I'm against this. You know, that's not what it's about. It's the, still the level of being lawlessness these people just want to obstruct that's what donald trump says these people are wanting to obstruct and they'll do anything anything to obstruct so it was it was rather rather interesting but i will tell you this the level and the amount of people marco that came up to me and the people that spoke today the amount of people that came and said thank you thank you for coming and speaking Thank you for doing that. We can't speak because they either have jobs that they can't, you know, doesn't allow them to speak. They said, but we've had to listen to this weeks after weeks after weeks. They're coming in here telling it. So finally, thank you for coming and taking a stand and speaking out that somebody out there in our community cares that our money isn't spent on these lawsuits. That, that people are out there wanting people to follow the law. Thank you. They thanked us. And I have people going, man, if I could just hug you right now and kiss you right now, I'd do it. But I can't because, you know, obviously my job doesn't allow me to. And that was the best feeling in the world, Marco. That was the best feeling knowing that there's so many people that do want to speak, but they can't. They can't because they're in positions where they, where they can't. And I get that. But... 
I was afforded the opportunity to be in the position that I'm in now. And I am, I am beyond blessed that I have state leadership here in the, in our Republican party that says, go do what you need to do. Speak out on behalf of our principles, speak out um, and, 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 you know, and, and stand up for yourself. And that is amazing, Marco, that we have the support from our leadership that's saying, no, we're not going to be silent anymore. And, you know, I did those listening tours. Remember, I was going around the state of Texas doing the listening tours. Do you know what one of the things that the Hispanics were telling me? I'm talking about hundreds of Hispanics because we put, pulled in a bunch of Hispanics from different cities. Do you know what was one of their biggest complaints? Mm. The Republican Party doesn't stand up for itself. You don't defend yourself. And I thought, wow, this is coming from Hispanics telling us that we're not defending ourselves. So you know what? This is me taking action for all those Hispanics across the state of Texas that says we don't defend ourselves. Well, guess what? We're going to start defending ourselves. We will start defending our party platform. We will start defending our principles in the Republican Party. And we will start fighting for those principles that we as a community care for. So there are people out there. I want them to know that during the listening tour, I did listen. I read, the, I read what they said on their reports. That was the whole point, is that out of 10.8 Latinos here in the state of Texas, I refuse, just because I'm state director, I refuse to be the only voice. And I hold those Hispanics accountable. That's why you saw today, there was a whole bunch of others that were with me, but they didn't speak. They just went in support and they stood with me at the press conference, but they didn't want to speak, but they wanted to be there to stand with me in support. So I had a whole bunch of other people too. And that goes to show that we're finally not going to be scared anymore. And we're going to say something. We're going to stand up for what we believe in. And you know what? I still have to always go back and say, thank you, Marco, because you started this. You gave us. You Thank did. You, so you gave us Hispanics and Latinos. You gave us that that platform to stop being afraid and to say something and to stand up for what we believed in. So you activated so many people around the country to start being a voice. You did that, Marco. You yourself and I mean there was others, but you stuck it out. When others just kind of, you know, you saw them falling off. You stuck it out. You took a beating. You were ri ridiculed. You were, I mean, listen, when the media was outside your house, I mean, you know, you did all of that for us. So the, la the least that we can do around the country is continue the fight, is continue the battle that we are fighting with the left that tries to take advantage and to take our country and to take, you know, our God-given rights and God away from us. No more. That's why I have the show unsilenced on Informa America, Informa America, because because of your leadership, because of your your uh, uh, you know willingness to be courageous and to speak out, you cause people like me to be unsilenced now. I have a voice now, awesome. and I awesome. am grateful, and I it's I hope that other people are inspired and are doing the same as we are. You're in California, I'm in Texas, and there's others in Texas, as you saw today, that stood with me. And it's just but so I wanted, important. I wanted to say that James Dickey was watching this. Yes, I saw that. That's, that's, that's my boss. He is, so he is supportive. I, I, I want to thank him for, he is for supportive. helping you on that. And it's just, yeah, you know, I'll send you your $100 for later. I wish. <laughs> no, I wish. No, I'm, 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 I'm truly humbled. And today I know that I, I'm kind of like you, you know, I feel like today I opened up a, a can of, you know, worms that were, that were, uh, I got a target on my back now here in my own city. They were furious. I mean, if you saw that opposition when I taped it, They were talking. They were so furious. They were trying to come after me. You know, they were like, lady that spoke, the lady that said this, the lady that said that. They didn't know me by name, but they, they do. They do know. And I'm, you know, so 
it's going to be very important that we continue to unite Hispanics that are in favor of this and that we continue to stick together and show up in full force so that we don't, we don't uh, break the narrative that, you know, there's no Hispanics who support it. You know, I tried the, one of the news stations did tell me, they're like, but the majority of Hispanics, you know, are for this. And I'm like, obviously they're not. Cause if well, there well, was, I was the, yeah, I was uh, listening to that number. You said that somebody said that 69% of Hispanic that she represented 69% of Hispanics. Yeah. She went, that, that girl went two weeks ago to city council and I was sitting, I just so happened to be at that city council meeting and she went up there. I had no idea that these people were doing what they were doing, but I happened to be at city council that night. So she went up there and she said, I, you know, represent 69% of the Latinos here in Pasadena, Texas, and we are against uh, SB4. And I said, I looked around, I said, I know she ain't speaking for me. And that's when I said, we're going to have to do something. So, yeah, that's why I had, you know, I had Hispanics go up there. I had the Asians. I had the, you know, MLK, the, the, the African-Americans. I had them go in, in, in diverse, as diverse as we could be, to show that you don't speak for all of us. Don't throw a number and say you represent 69% of our Latinos here in Pasadena because you don't. She, she is suffering from the Jorge Ramos syndrome. Yes. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, 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 oh, my gosh. Absolutely. And then they try to say, oh, she's not impressive when she brings in these organizations. I'm like, and what are you? You're with move.org and with top and you're with Fiel. You're the same thing. You're with all these Democrat liberal organizations that Soros has been pumping money into. So what makes me different? I don't have somebody pumping money into MLK, into Latinos for Trump. I wish we did, but we don't. We don't have anybody pumping money into our organizations. We do this because we want to. We're not doing this because anybody is paying us. We do this because it's we want to do what's, you know, what's, what's right. And we got tired of being in the corner and not saying anything and people taking advantage of our country. Yes. Yes, and you know, I hope everybody that's watching and everybody that's in Texas, they go and see your life. Uh, I want to post. I'm going to post it here, so that they can do the same thing in every city out there. And and I'm so glad that you went out there on the on the listening tour and you listened to what they're saying. And yeah, I've been saying that with our our community is not stupid. They know what they're doing. Yeah, they know when to act and when don't. You know all those. Um, Illegal crossings that it, they're down to like seven down by seventy percent. That's because they don't want to yeah. spend. They don't want to spend that twelve thousand dollars. They know. They know. The word is out. The yeah. word is out. So they're not going to risk it right now. And same thing in here too. That you know they know sanctuary cities are in place. They're going to keep doing what they do over there. The ones that don't have that, then they're going to they're going to start. Look, they're already applying to be a citizen because they know they're not so they know how to survive a lot of people don't give credit to these people these people have the ability to survive if, if they yeah. survive in third world countries they're gonna do whatever they have to do to be here so let's not be so let's not feel so sorry about them yeah because that's what they yeah. try to do that is their biggest i think that's their biggest weapon is to play the victim card yes Yep. Poor me. Look, I had a poor me. I had a friend. I had a friend that, you know, I'm, 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 uh, I volunteer in uh, drug rehab and all that. I had a friend that had been messing up for for so long, and he would get arrested and go back and keep doing it. The 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 minute he got the letter from um, from ICE to be deported, he he left. <laughs> You know, because they, they know, it's just, they know they're getting away with it, and, and, and they just. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I know. so people, people you know, that and really want to talking... be people that really want to be I was talking here, to. Go ahead. Yes, no, I, I agree, I agree. I, I, and I was talking to, to uh, someone who has been here 
in the country for over 15 years. And uh, they've never, you know, not even a speeding ticket. They've never even gotten stopped. Uh, they're, you know, undocumented. And they said, I want to do, uh, you know, can you tell me, direct me who I need to talk to? But we don't, we don't really, you know, they don't trust attorneys because attorneys have already robbed them. Attorneys have been robbing people left and right, you know. And so um, one of the things that we were just, it was just a conversation, but they were telling me how simple matters. They had a toothache went to the dentist. They don't have health insurance because they can't. They're undocumented. So uh, they said, you know, I go to the dentist. It's going to cost me $3,000. They want it half up front and half after. They said, I couldn't afford that. And I said, right, I'm hearing you. And I said, that's why you need to be here legally because that way you can apply for insurance. <laughs> that's why you, you need to be afforded the same benefits that us as U.S. citizens are afforded. But when you stay here illegally, you get nothing but abused for low wages. You don't get the same health care benefits. You don't get anything. You don't get nothing. And, and that person said, no, absolutely. I, I agree. And I am also sickened. Now, this is an undocumented person. They said, you know, an illegal alien says, I am sick of seeing people that are here illegally taking advantage of the system when I work my butt off to put food on the table for my children. And there's people that are here like me living off welfare and I've never asked for welfare. And I said, you're the kind of person that we want here. Those other people are just taking advantage of our system. So to hear that person say that those are the kind of people we want here in the United States. Those are the kind of people we want to help to be here, you know, and, and so they get it. She's the, that person's not in an uproar going, Hey, you know, well, the, the, you know, United States owes me. They understand. They want to be here legally. They want to be here legally, but you know what? They've been enabled to live in a sanctuary city and never forced to have to face reality. You know, when they first came here, they probably should have applied for papers and done whatever they could to do to be here legally. Exactly. And that's what they should have done. But, you know, the, the system, the system that Obama created caused people to not have to do anything. So I said, you know, that's what's wrong. And they're going to continue that with the sanctuary city. They want yeah. to continue that mentality. Uh, it's okay. We don't have, you don't have to uh, document yourself. You don't have to do what it takes to be part of this country. You know, I see yeah. it. People would rather buy a $60,000 Suburban than go and see an attorney and pay them for, you know, to, to, to see what, what needs to be done. Um, yeah. Not to pass judgment on them, but, you know, it's, it's just, there's a problem. Their priorities are wrong. Yeah, their priorities are wrong. And, uh, and so we're fortunate that we have a president now who's taken a stance on making sure that people get their priorities straight. That's what they have to do is get their priorities straight. And, uh, and that's what, obviously, according to your stats earlier, obviously that's, what ha that's what's happening. People are getting their priorities state straight. They're having now, to face the reality of, do I want to be here or do I not want to be here? This is where this is where we need to work. What where we need to work? A lot of people are saying that most Hispanics that are getting their citizenship is to go against Trump. I don't think so. I I think there's a big percentage, but I, we want that forty percent also. So we 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 have to go out there and welcome all these new citizens and tell them that they don't have to go. They don't have to identify Democrat just because they just became citizens. That they're welcome to be mm -hmm. whatever they want to be. And a lot of them are going to fall on our side. Well, I think that that is what my job is with the Republican Party, is to educate and spread awareness on our principles. Most Hispanics know, if you look at the party platforms, if you look at what the Democrats stand for and what the Republicans stand for, and you know our culture, it's very evident what, how we're supposed to vote. It's very evident. What we stand for in the Hispanic community is not for what the Democrats push, you know? 
uh, uh, Hispanic communities, we are obviously God loving people. Okay. We don't want our Christian values taken away, but again, they're not educated. They don't understand that. Second of all, we're pro-life people. We don't believe in killing our own babies. We just don't. You know, uh, you know, the majority, I mean, that's why we have so many, that's why we have so many uh, 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 Hispanics and Latinos and Mexicans. That's why we have all those, you know, young girls at age of 15 having babies. Why? Because we don't promote, you know, we don't promote killing the baby. We don't promote pro-choice. We're a family oriented right. community. So when you go down the list, you know, Hispanics, we've talked about this. We're going to find a way to make ends meet in our families. We're entrepreneurs by nature. We're going to figure out what to do, how to do it. We're, whether it's, again, selling those taquitos, selling tamales, it doesn't matter. We're going to figure out a way to do to earn that extra money. So we're entrepreneurs by nature. And because we're, that's what little, with the little entrepreneurs that we are, we believe in our small businesses. Well, the Republican Party, that's, that's what we believe in. We, we, we apoyamos. You know, we support small businesses. We don't want to be overregulated. We don't want to be overtaxed because then we won't be profitable as a small business. So the Republicans stand up for that. And when you sit there and you see all just going down the line of the platform, you know, pro, pro gun, you know, Second Amendment right, you know, most of our Hispanics, believe it or not, they like their guns. I mean, Heck, even even if you're an, even if you're in a gang member and you're Hispanic, you know you got guns. Who wants your guns taken away? You know, they like, I mean, they like to go hunting. They like to go. They like to go hunting. hunting. Yeah, los rancheros, los rancheros. They like to go hunting. So, we have so much more to offer as a party. So it is our job, and my job, you know, and the Republican Party's job is to educate our people. So that they understand the difference of, you know, of, of who we are as a party and what they're voting for. You know, uh, a friend of mine, Roy Mendez, said, you know, 90% Hispanics are God-loving people. But 70% of those Hispanics vote atheist. They're voting atheist. And so that's a huge statement to say which is so very true. That's why we as a party have to do so much better about educating and spreading awareness to our Hispanic communities. And for so long, we have allowed the Democrats to take control of those Hispanic communities. And the Republicans have refused to go into the Hispanic communities because they say, nah, they vote Democrat. You know, don't worry about it. I mean, we're not going to go in that community. We can't afford to do that anymore. Because we're letting those people get abused, used, lied to, enabled. They continue to be impoverished. They continue to, you know, to live in poverty. What good does that do them? What good has a Democrat Party done for you? And that is why we have to be, we have to, as a Hispanic community, we have to do better. We really do. So people like me and you, Marco, that's what I say, you know, people like me and you, Ariel out and Jose out, Eliana, you know, out in, in Florida, we've got, you know, Maria here in Texas that's helping me. We've got Paloma, we've got just Miriam Witcher. I mean, we've got so many people all over that are not afraid to speak out anymore. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things, and I, I talked to you earlier and, you know, you were saying, hey, you know, um, I'm going to repost your, the way you talk to council and, you know, the way that you lined up and, you know, we had to go in there acting civilly, you know, we weren't going to go acting crazy and we couldn't speak out because we'd get kicked out. We want to follow the rules. And, um, I think we're much more effective when we do things the right way than out of emotion, right? Because all of us, we get mad. I'm guilty of it. We get mad. We want to always do something and, and do it on emotion but we got to really think about it you know and and you know i just thank god because i pray to him and i ask him i may not be the perfect person don't know why you chose me to do what i do but i ask god to give me wisdom marco i ask <laughs> i ask god to give me wisdom and so with that wisdom you know i'm like i brought those groups together and I guarantee you when we watch the news tonight, 
I guarantee you they will not make a mention of how diverse and united we were today. They're not going to mention that. They're not going to focus on that. They're going to try to bring out, you know, the negative of it. That's just what the mainstream media does. But you know what? That's okay. Because we, I taped it live myself. So whatever they don't say, I can come back and say, that's not what I said. This is what I said. Because I taped it so that well, I could have that on record you, myself. Believe it or not, I, I am so glad that I met you and I met everybody. There's so many to mention here, but there's so many kids that go to my Instagram account, to my Twitter account, and they ask me uh, how they can help because a lot of people out there, they're starting to, to see that we're doing something that it's going to benefit everybody. Yes. So thank you for yes. being there because we need to put that platform together so that these new people come in and help. Yes. And Marco, like I tell you all, all the time, you've got to get involved with your local party. Get involved with it. If you don't want to get involved with a local party, get involved with a, a, a women's republic or a Republican group, any kind of organization, an auxiliary club. You've got to get involved. Just be involved. Because that's how you're going to learn how our party works. You're going to become a more effective, uh, you know, speaker. You're going to become more effective and knowledgeable of what's going on within the party so you can resent the, represent the party, you know, in a true and form manner. And that's why you have to do what you have to do. So, you know, those people that are reaching out to you, make sure that, you know, you tell them that they need to, that's their civic duty. They need to get involved with their local party, not to be afraid anymore. You know, you guys have formed groups out in California and you guys have it tougher. You're living in under like, man, it's like spiritual warfare over there for y'all. But the liberalism is at a whole new level. So you guys are under so much opposition, but you form so many groups and and there that's where you you need to you know you need to tell those young individuals that are contacting you on how what to, for what can they do get involved in the local party wherever you're at you know regardless get involved you know what and if somebody doesn't help you or they don't they don't want to help you or they're not, you know they're not knowledgeable whatever if they, you feel you're not being accepted hey tell them to call me or you tell them to call me or you cuz i don't okay. mind making a phone call you know, I don't mind making a phone call to help somebody out and say, hey, you know, I'm sending somebody. I'm from the state of Texas. I don't mind doing that because I believe it's important to our party. It's so important to our party. And as you saw today at city council, if you looked around at the people that I brought together, they were young. They were young. That's our future. And I got them to go speak out. I told them, we're not going to be afraid anymore. And they're not afraid. But that's how it starts. Like, you got to teach your young how to stand up for yourself civically and go speak out in what you believe in. And they did. But if you did see that, you know, they were young. I had a young crowd with me today. I did have some older people, but, I mean, I had young people. And I, I think it was just sends a beautiful picture to, to anybody who was watching. I'm just so proud of the diversity. The diversity, Marco, spoke volumes. It just spoke volumes. It doesn't get any better than that. And to think that I just put this together yesterday on 4th of July. I just said, hey, you know what? There's city council meeting today, tomorrow. Who can go speak with me? And I had a huge show of hands. I'll be there. I'll be there. And then that's because some people didn't get to show up because they had to report to work. So I think to me, I'm just so beyond um, blessed and humbled that I've had the opportunity to do what I did today. I know, you know, I hadn't done it before. I've, I've done press conferences for Latinos for Trump, but I had never done it on behalf of our Republican Party. So, uh, you know, awesome. they, and, the, and the left was so mad. We're not here. We're not here for party politics and GOP. And I'm like, you know what? I'm proud. Just the way you're proud because you're brown, proud and loud. I'm proud to be part of the Republican Party. I'm proud to be brown, the Hispanic proud and loud. director. You know, I'm proud. As a brown person, I'm proud myself to be part of the Republican Party and to stand for what I stand for. That is, to me, just the, to me, that was 
that was just an honor to be able to say that. So I'm not going to be ashamed because I work for the Republican Party, because I can now speak on behalf of the Republican Party. I'm not going to be ashamed of it, you know, and I don't think other people should either. So anyway, that's that's what happened today. So I'm, I'm you know, but like I said, hey, now I got targets on my back. <laughs> They're going to come after me, Marco, like they came after you. <laughs> so, yeah, they weren't happy. I'll tell you, I'll tell you something. It's worth it. It's, it's definitely worth it. Yeah. I'm a bigger person today I, I, than I was just because of what I did. You, that's awesome. That's awesome. My, my, I'm hoping my goal, Marco, my goal, and, and it should be everybody's goal. Okay. Our goal as a Hispanic community should be to register as many new voters as we can and to show in 2018 just how much of a voice we really are. That's my goal. We haven't seen the Hispanic community really show up in numbers. And it's time. It's time. We need to be more than 30%. We need to be a 60, 70, 80%. That's what we need to be. So it is our duty to do that. So what you guys, I, I will tell y'all, y'all have to help Omar Novato in order to beat Nazi Waters. You guys need to be registering new voters that haven't ever voted before. They're out there. You guys have to, you know, that's what has to happen in California. You're going to have to inspire those people to go out there and vote for you because you're going to represent them for, the, for doing what's right for them. And that's going to be very pivotal. You can't rely on the same voters, the ones that go. You know, and you, you want to rely on some of those, but you want to rely on new voters. You want to rely on the old ones that are already registered, and you want to rely on new ones. Bring the numbers. That's what you got to do. Expand you got to show the, party. the numbers. Exactly. Expansion. Yeah. Expand the party. Grow the party. You know, and, and it's time now. And, and, and Trump has opened that narrative for us to be proud of who we are and to be proud of being Americans, to be proud of the country we live in, to be proud of all our men who served in our country, you know, all of our men and women in, 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 in uniform who protect us. You know, it is time for us to really be proud that those people go and do the things they do for us in representing us, to be able to have the freedoms that we do. And so that, to me, is very important. And so I think as a Hispanic community, it's our duty. We are now being called to do what is civically right. And that's what we have to do. So... Always continue to do what you're doing. You know, you got to be wise as a serpent, but gentle as a dove. All right. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you All for right. your support. Thank you for everything you do, Marco. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bianca. Okay. Bye. Kids, kids, please, I'm, I'm doing a live. Yeah. What's up, guys? Sorry, my kids are making noise. Um, I had to, um, that's Bianca, guys. That's Bianca, and, uh, man, I'm just so proud of Bianca. And, uh, yeah, she was saying something about Omar. If you're not following Bianca yet, please go friend her and follow her because she is uh, doing a great job. And not just that, I feel that she understands, first of all, she understands the party of Texas, the GOP. Uh, her and James Dickey, they're doing a great job. But I think that what Texas is doing is a great model that we can adopt here in California, New York, and all other states. So Bianca is a person that I really look up to and, and I, I, I follow her and I see all she's doing all the time. She shares some of the... Uh, some of the 
the way they're doing this. They did that listening tour. I'm going to share that model with uh, the Republicans here in, in Sacramento next month. No, this month. Uh, in about two weeks. So hopefully we can continue to do what Bianca is doing in other states. So I invite you to go ahead and, and follow her and, and look at her last two lives. And you're going to see what I'm talking about. And so that we can go and volunteer at a local level. That's how it starts. The home group, it's where everything starts. So if you're not participating on your civil um, events at a local level, please go and do that. I'm, I'm going to be doing that myself. I, I, I'm going to Sacramento, actually, even if it's like an hour from me. But because my area is so freaking liberal that that's pretty, <laughs> very much, there's, there's nobody. Uh, but here in uh, Pittsburgh, they just revoked the sanctuary city status, which tells me that there's a lot of people that are like-minded, uh, that want the same thing that we all want. Let's do it. Let us know when. Amen. Yes, yeah, Stephanie. I'll let you know, Stephanie. Um, I'm going to go to Sacramento. Uh, I think it's the second Tuesday of the month. Yeah. So I love you guys. Thank you so much. I'm sorry my kids were making noise. <laughs> they didn't know I was live. I'm fixing a computer for my son. And he, uh, I'm putting new windows in it and he's waiting here at the office. But uh, thank you guys. Talk to you soon. Thank you, Cecil. Again, if you're not following Bianca, please go and follow her. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.